Welcome to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, where we interview experts in Saskatchewan real estate. I'm your host, Ron Caroni. Very happy to welcome Mary Castillo to the show this week. Mary is a credit counselor and helps clients repair their credit, which can be a really important thing in the home buying process. Enjoy. You're listening to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast where we chat with real estate experts from across the province to learn what's happening in the real estate market. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Hello, Mary, and welcome to the program. Uh, before we get into all things credit, uh, I just ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a credit counselor. Thank you. Um, again, I'm so happy to be here today and thank you for inviting me into this podcast. Um, so I've been with the Credit Counseling Society just over six years now and I'm a credited credit counselor here in Saskatoon. Uh, before this, I worked in the financial industry. So I worked in the banking industry for just over five years. Um, did take a little bit of time off to raise my little boys that are now pretty grown up, but uh, I've been enjoying working at Credit Counseling Society. The best part of my job is that I get to truly, truly help people and we don't have any vested interests with any options we talk about. We are a nonprofit organization, which is huge. And so why I love working at this company is because it resonates with me as a person and who I am. And uh, it can be just so rewarding and life-changing for people with information that we can give and help. You feel like you really get to give back and help those people in a situation where they really might need that. Absolutely. Like I can tell you, there's so many stories that I could say, which I won't go through all of them right now, but like insanely, insanely life changing. Um, and it's just so, so exciting when people pay off their debt and you can give them, you know, the big hurrah at the end of the day or just give them a little bit of information on how they can prove their circumstances. It goes a long way. That's great. So we'll kind of launch into some of those great tips and stuff, and maybe we can help some folks out there. And let's start it off, Mary. What is a credit score? So that's a good question. Um, learning about your credit report is almost like learning a new language. And basically what a credit score does is it gives you an ability to, uh, or a lender the ability to establish the odds of you paying back a debt. So if somebody was to pull their own credit report, um, at the bottom of a credit report is an overall score, and that can be as low as 300 or as high as 850 or 900, depending on the credit reporting agency that you're using. And so if we use an example here, if you had a credit score of 590, then if a lender was looking at that circumstance, they would look at all the people in your kind of certain financial situation, and out of 850 people, um, 590 will actually pay back that debt. So it's the odds of paying back that debt. If your credit score is higher, like for example, if your credit score was 750, then 750 people out of the 850 would pay back that debt. So it's your odds of paying back your credit that you borrow, the money that you're borrowing from them. Very interesting. I'd never heard yeah. that before uh, of that explanation. So very informative. Can you tell yeah. us how that's calculated, Mary? What kind of things go into making up that number? Yeah, so there's actually about five different things that affect your credit score. The biggest chunk of what affects your credit score is your payment history and how much money that you owe out of all the debts that you owe. Um, so that makes about 60% of it. And then the rest that affects a credit score is um, the length of time that you've had that credit, um, new applications for credit, and then the types of credit that you use. And just to kind of break it down, let's just talk a little bit about each one. So your payment history is really important because it shows if you have made regular payments on those debts, it kind of gives you that good, clean history of keeping up with those payments, says that you're responsible for paying back those debts. Um, the amount of money that you owe can play a big role in this because if you owe a lot of money, if something happened to you, there's a chance that you wouldn't be paying that money back. So that can have huge impact on a credit score. So ideally you wanna keep your uh, the amount that you owe lower. Um, 
on a regular basis. Um, as you probably know, Ron, there's something called a debt ratio, and that always comes into play when you're applying for a mortgage or other types of things. And so, again, that's calculated by your income level and the amount of debt that you owe. So there's always different ranges um, where a lender is going to give you more money or not, depending on what the debt ratio is. Um, the length of credit history just kind of gives you a timeline. So if somebody is very new to credit, they may not have as great of a score as somebody that's been using credit for quite a few years because it does take time to rebuild, to build up that history and showing that you're using that credit properly and, and being responsible with that. And then credit applications, this is also kind of an interesting thing to learn about. Um, so many times I get asked, uh, you know, do, you know, pulling my credit report, I've heard it affects my credit score. You know, how does that affect me so much? And so there's actually two different types of credit pulls that can be done. And so, for example, if you pulled your own credit report, that's considered a soft credit pull. If you were to apply for a credit card or a loan, that's a hard credit pull. So a soft credit report soft credit pull is just like getting information. So I'm just checking in, I wanna see what my credit looks like, but I'm not applying for anything. So you could pull your own credit report a thousand times a day, it will not affect your credit score whatsoever, okay? But if you're applying for credit cards or loans or mortgages, vehicle loans, all different types of things that you're applying for, if you're going from place to place to place, every time you get your credit report pulled, it can slowly start to impact your credit report. And why that is, is if, for example, I was in trouble and I, you know, I'm starting to max out the credit that I have and all of a sudden I'm trying to borrow from Peter to pay Paul, I might try to go to all these different places to get as much money as I can to live. So that would be a reason why my credit would be affected. Um, the other side is if somebody stole your identity, that's exactly what they would do. They would grab as much credit as they can to steal as much money as they can so that then you're left owing that. So it kind of serves as a red flag to protect you as well as to protect the lenders that are out there. Now there is an exception to the rule in regards to the hard credit pulls um, and that is when you're shopping for a mortgage or a vehicle loan. So only those two things don't have the same impact as if you are going from place to place getting different credit cards as an example. So shopping for a vehicle loan or a mortgage, um, it's normal for people to shop around for a vehicle. They wanna get the nicest vehicle and maybe get the best rate for that. Also with a mortgage, as you might know as a mortgage broker, people shop around, they wanna have the best rate. They're gonna be paying off a huge amount of debt with a mortgage and so they wanna have the cheapest rate for that and so it's pretty normal for people to shop around. And so what the credit reporting agencies have done is, is they've used a certain time span which they call bundling where you can shop around for roughly about a month. It's around 14 to 45 days. And when you're shopping around, example, for a mortgage, you have that time period where it only actually counts as one credit re one credit pull, hard pull on the credit report. So if you're shopping around for a mortgage, you don't have to be as like worried about your credit score if we compare that to uh, pulling it for a credit card at different places. And then the last type of thing that affects your credit score is the types of credit that you use. So somebody that has a credit card, a mortgage, or a vehicle loan would have a higher credit rating than somebody that's in like the payday loan cycle or those high interest loan types of cycles. Um, again, that's just showing that they're a bit more responsible. Somebody in the payday loan cycle is they don't have ability to build up savings or they, they get stuck in that payday loan cycle, it's very hard for them to get out of that. So that affects a credit score. Very so I know that's <laughs> a lot of information about that question, but I think it's and, really important to know. Yeah. And just going back to it, that is my number one question when I'm talking with the client and a lot of them are good credit applicants, but they do get scared because they might not know exactly what their credit score is and they hear there might be that effect on that. So it's really informative to kind of have that broken down and know that it's not going to crash my credit score from a 750 down to a 600 to know that we're just pulling credit to know that you're a person who can apply for this mortgage. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. So 
kind of going back to it, the the person out there is watching all of this and you're talking about payday loans and how much credit I have and how often it's being pulled. And, and someone says like, why do I ever need to know this? And we've kind of alluded to it a little bit, but why is having a good credit score so important in everyday life? So the main reason why a credit, good strong credit score is important is it goes back to those odds basically, right? So, um, if you have a good credit rating, you can borrow more for different things. You have more access. You get almost like the golden treatment. You walk in and, oh, you have a great credit score. We're going to lend you all our money. We're going to be able to you know, give you what you want. It just gives the ability to have what you want right away and have ability to pay back those debts over a slow period of time. And so it just gives more opportunity for that. And, and if you didn't have a good credit rating, if your credit score is on that lower side, you may still be able to access credit, but you might not be able to access credit. And if you do access credit, then the interest rate will be a lot higher for you because you're more at risk to pay that back. That's great. And so there does tend to be sometimes a stigma about having a bad credit. And it's sometimes just life happens. Can we talk about some of the circumstances that lead people to having poorer credit scores? Yeah, actually, that um, can be almost infinite. But realistically, you know, injury or illness, job loss, reduction of income, separation or divorce can happen with that. The other things that can come into play is, you know, we are human beings. We, if we make more money, we spend more money. It's very instinctual to do that. I, I'm making good money now. I have a good credit rating. I'm going to spend more. And then life happens. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you have a lot of debt and you're scrambling to keep up. And so that can have great effects on that credit rating too. Right. Uh, does your organization keep any statistics on Saskatchewan residents and the current situation right now? I know there's a lot of stuff going on with coronavirus, job loss, a weird economy, real estate is taking off. Are, are you guys seeing anything on your side? Yeah, so actually, um, I knew you were going to ask this question. So I, I kind of pulled up some information here. And I just used our, our most recent study that we did. Um, it's with our consumer debt report that we put out at the end of December here. And we actually did this through um, a separate party. So we actually did it through the Angus Reed Forum, um, which is Canada's most well known and trusted online public um, opinion community. And why we approached them for that is because we wanted something that was very unbiased and that just would give us an overview of all of Canada. Um, the study was done throughout Canada and it was there was 1,805 adults that uh, answered the questions for that. Now what I want to bring out here is out of the, the community that answered the questions, there was one question that was asked and it was asked if um, for people that owe more than $10,000 of non-mortgage debt. And the normal average within all of Canada um, was actually about 40% of people had non-mortgage debt. Um, here in Saskatchewan, we're actually at 70%. So 70% of our community of Saskatchewan has stated that we have um, non-mortgage debt of $10,000 or more. And to me, I found that quite interesting because that just kind of gives us an idea of what are Saskatchewan residents looking at here. So we might be, um, you know, having that extra income now that we're all working from home. Uh, we have more money to spend instead of going playing for parking or actually going traveling. We might be, you know, using that to do, you know, renovations on our houses and things like that. Um, and or, you know, some of us might be had a lower income level, so we're using credit to to um, manage our everyday expenses. Hmm. So moving on to the next question, if someone finds themselves in a situation where they have had some credit trouble, what are some of the steps that they can take to kind of help them get out of that? Yeah, so, well, I would suggest strongly actually to get a, a a free consultation with a nonprofit organization such as ourselves here at Credit Counseling Society, we can really dig into a, a particular situation and give 
very clear uh, plan on how to get that credit rating back up and how to deal with those debts. Um, but if somebody was to manage that on their own, um, ideally what you want to do is if you do have debt and you're kind of at a max out level, you want to get that debt down to at least 75% of whatever you owe as an available balance on the credit card or on those types of loans. Um, and then you want to pay off or get um, any collections removed from your credit report. So things that you can actually pay off and get actually pulled off and removed from your credit report immediately are uh, telephone, cell phone collection bills, utilities, or parking tickets. Um, if you have collections, uh, for example, if it was a credit card that had gone into collections and you paid that off, it will show as a collection paid, but it will stay there for up to seven years on your credit report. Um, but it is much better to pay that off and have that closed uh, versus leaving it open and outstanding. Depending on a person's debt situation, can there be different things that you would do? And maybe that's why it would be a good idea to talk to someone who is a professional who could say like, you know, based on your situation, this is the debt that we should focus on to get rid of. And, and each situation kind of has its own answer. That's right. Yeah. So it is, um, everybody's unique, like kind of, we're all like snowflakes. We all have, we all are snowflakes, but we all have a different unique feature to our, our own personality and our own uh, financial um, outlook. And so um, as our company, when we do look at somebody's situation, we help them create a budget. First off, we see how much it takes for them to survive. And then we figure out from there, how much can they afford to pay back their debt or where can they tweak things to pay back those debts? Um, ideally, initially, we try to maybe help them to manage that on their own. But we do actually have something in our organization here where we can help to mediate those debts. So as an example, if you had a lot of different debts, and you're not able to pay them back, our company can almost bundle them together. The debt actually stays with those creditors. Um, by mediating that, you make one monthly payment to us and we send that to each creditor every month. And with that program, it can actually reduce most debts down to as low as 0% interest with a payment plan over a four and a half year timeline. Now, why that could be very useful for somebody is it it helps them to get rid of those debts. Um, it gives them a light at the end of the tunnel with that, gets them out of the never never land with that. Um, but there can be some hindrances to credit if they are paying a debt back through that process. Um, overall, it, you know, if they are struggling, it does get them there much faster to get into that good credit rating and that good standing. Um, and we also go through legal options. So if somebody was kind of thinking, I only, you know, I only have my only option is bankruptcy. You know, there are so, so many things that could be done before somebody goes through that option. So it is worth a free consultation to get a full picture of what you're doing with your own finances and, and give a have a plan set forward. Certainly. Are there surprise things that hurt people's credit, Mary? They are going for a mortgage or they're going for a loan and there's things that they didn't know that were hurting their credit score that was bringing it down? Um, I guess, yeah, one thing that might hurt is not having credit at all. So technically that's a hindrance. You don't have a credit score to begin with. So there's no way to prove that you can pay back a mortgage in the future. Um, Cell phone bills are something that can affect a credit score that a lot of people are not aware of. Um, so that can be a thing uh, that's very important that you're keeping up with those cell phone payments. Um, and then just if you had a parking ticket that had gone into collections, you may not think that a parking ticket would uh, have any impact on a credit score, but if it's gone into collections, that would have an impact on your credit rating. And on the mm -hmm. flip side of that, are there surprising things that help with our credit score that maybe we didn't know of? So uh, one major thing is, yeah, again, with in regards to balances owing on debt. So if you had a credit card with an available limit of $1,000, to kind of keep the best credit rating overall or try to keep that credit score in good standing, you do actually want to try to get the amount that you own that under 30% on a regular basis and or pay it off regularly. Hmm. So that can make a huge difference to impact and bring up that credit rating. So if it's a thousand dollars that you have available, you want to keep it around that 300. If you're carrying a balance over time um, to have that increase in the credit 
report. Um, if you've had impact to your credit, uh, another thing you can do is get something called a cash secured credit card. And that's where you save up a bit of money, you give it to a company and they'll deposit it in an account. They give you a credit card to use with the same amount that's deposited. When you use a credit card, you pay it back monthly. It works and acts exactly the same as a normal credit card, but they always hold the deposit aside. And that can help to be used to rebuild a credit rating when it's had a huge impact in the past or even slight impact in the past um, to help get that good credit rating and that good history back up. Can we quickly touch on that side? Uh, we are talking about Saskatchewan real estate. So yeah. if someone has gone through a bankruptcy, it's two years past and they've been really good. They haven't spent any money. They've actually ended up saving a bunch, but they go to go for a mortgage and they find out that they can't because they haven't rebuilt credit. Can we just quickly touch on that process and, and maybe how yeah. you would advise a client who is uh, going through a home buying process or, or renewing? Yeah, so if somebody's actually gone through a bankruptcy, there's a, a time when they're discharged. When um, So they've been monitored for a period of time and then they're just discharged and then it affects their credit score for six years after that discharge if they've been through a first bankruptcy. Um, the best thing that they can do is get that secured credit card because, again, it's a, it gives them ability to access credit because they've put a deposit down and the deposit's always being frozen in an account. So the creditor, whoever lends them the money for the credit card, always has that security of that deposit. And the main thing a person wants to do when building a credit rating is, is you want to use it once a month. You want to pay it off. You can put the card in a drawer until the next month. Use it again. Example I often use is buy a pack of gum. Wait a bit, pay it off, put it in the drawer, do it again the next month. And, and why I say a pack of gum is because a pack of gum is only $2, basically. It can't get you into trouble. You don't have, you know, the ability to get deeper and deeper into that. It's, you know, it's a simple thing that you're not going to go back into those old habits of using credit for a lot of different things. And, and you just need to show that you've used the credit card and pay it off on a regular Bu basis. Building those good habits that will also carry through that you might be able to launch term start to get them the mindset of use pay off use pay off yeah exactly. fantastic so uh, uh i'm ron caroni i'm sitting here i have that perfect 900 score like you know the one in a million kind of person what do i do to maintain that perfect credit score so as always, we want to keep our balances down as much as we can. So try to pay off that debt on a regular basis. If it's a credit card, if you have a loan, just maintain those monthly payments regularly. Um, and actually, there is some different things in regards to if you're dealing with a particular bank, building savings in that bank can actually help your rating even further with the financial institution itself. Again, it just makes you a stronger candidate uh, for any kind of future lending. Um, again, that golden ticket, they want to treat you well. If you got a lot of savings with them, then they want to lend you, you know, a lot of money in the future. <laughs> so maintaining that, that perfect credit rating is, is just, you know, constant being consistent about making regular payments and um, being stable, being that stable person that you are. And it will awesome. maintain that. Before we let you go, Mary, can you share some of your contact details if anyone is out there wanting to uh, perhaps learn a little bit more about uh, how their credit scores work or if someone is looking for a bit of help on this topic? Yeah, so I actually would encourage anybody interested in learning more about their credit scores is, is to actually go into our website. Our website is www.mymoneycoach.ca. On that website, we have a ton of information in regards to credit reporting and how to maintain a credit score. We also offer free classes in that uh, website, so you can sign up for those. And if you are wanting a free consultation with one of our credit counselors here at Credit Counseling Society, you can call 888-527-8999. And anyone that answers can book you in with one of our credit counselors, and we'll be happy to help. That's great. Before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to add on the topic of credit? 
I do want to actually share one little thing here. Um, in our company, uh, the average person that we see has on average about 30000 just above $30,000 worth of debt with seven different type of creditors. Um, so that would be overdrafts, lines of credit, credit cards, and so on. Their average income is $5,130 gross per month. And so these stats I got from our 2019 annual report, our 2020 hasn't come out yet. And so we took a, a poll of all of the clients that we see. And so one thing that I just, why I wanna bring this up is, you know, Taking having a gross income of $5,130 a month is a pretty good income for most individuals there. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, when you have good income, you know, it's okay to ask for help, even if you do feel like you can manage those debts and you can maintain that. Um, again, seven different types of debt is an average. Uh, that's a lot of different types of debt instruments that people have. And so we can make huge differences in regards to helping people to um, deal with those debts. Um, we do have a little spinner uh, tool that kind of gives uh, some different calculations for us. So, But I just wanted to share if, if an average person, and say they only had a credit card with $30,000 owing on that, and the regular rate is a normal credit card rate of 19.9% annually. Um, if they only paid minimum payments, and the minimum payment would be $600 a month on that, if they only made those minimum payments, it would take 109 years to pay that debt back. And the interest they would pay on $30,000 is $143,757. Wow. Now, the reason why I want to share this is because if you bumped up your payment by $150, $150 on that same particular debt, you would cut down the timeline from 109 years to five years and six months. And the interest that you would save, you would cut it down from $143,757, it would cut down to $19,644. It seems like a pretty easy choice. Yeah, it's just kind of, I just wanted to share that because um, a lot of times we have debts and we pay minimum payments on that and we kind of almost go into a sleep with it. It's just an easy thing to do and we may not realize how much that debt can add up or how long it will take us to pay that back and by just taking a snapshot of where you're at, Again, life-changing. We could change your world in regards to that if you just take a look at what you're doing and, uh, and review it and have a plan for the future. Not to mention your peace of mind over that 109-year period. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's quite an eye-opening uh, tool that we have there. So <laughs> I always like to share it because it, uh, you, know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't normally think about that. But when you see the numbers, it's, it's surprising. Yeah. Definitely. So thank you well, so much Mary, for I having me today. I want to thank you so much for, yeah, for, for joining me. It's been very informative and I know the people watching are getting a lot out of this. And so uh, have, a, have a great rest of your day and thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks again to Mary Castillo for joining us this week on the show. If you have any questions regarding credit, feel free to reach out. Don't let bad credit stop you from taking steps towards the wonderful journey that is home ownership. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with your friends and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great week. This has been the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you like this episode, find more information and episodes on our Facebook and YouTube pages. If you'd like to be a guest or have a conversation you'd like to learn more about, let us know by messaging the show on Facebook. Thanks for listening.